this is a traditional event for the far right. Uh, they have gathered on the 14th of October every year for, for, for a number of years already. Uh, but at the same time, the, the amount of people who came to the march, it was quite impressive. As far as I understand, there were from two to, to three thousand people. And I think this is the most um, um, no, a significant event in, 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 in terms of size, at least. And how do you feel the situation with far right after the latest attacks nearby the parliament? Well, obviously, Svoboda is now trying to recover its image because it, it did suffer a lot after the grenade was thrown at the National Guards. And now it is trying to again. Uh, position themselves as the most radical opposition to, to Poroshenko. They did this with Yanukovych, they also tried to show the population that they were mo the most radical opposition to Yanukovych, and now they're attempting the same thing with, uh, with Poroshenko. And it was the, the major message of the march. Uh, it was quite anti-systemic, anti-establishment, anti-government. Do you, feel, do you think that the government has the strategy to deal with the far right in Ukraine now? Um, no, I don't think that um, the state has the, a clear strategy. Of course, the police and the security services, they are trying to monitor the situation. They know most of these people and uh, perhaps even trying to somehow influence uh, their activities, but there is no clear strategy towards them. And um, as we can see, uh, the, the grenade by the Ukrainian parliament, it was a failure of the security services to know in advance that things such as this could, could happen. And do you see a difference between far right in Ukraine and Russia? Mm. Uh, there are some obvious uh, differences and there are obvious similarities. Similarities are that uh, the far right in general, not only in, in Ukraine or in Russia, it's very populist. It's usually against the government. And the most radical elements of the Russian far right are also against uh, Putin's regime. Uh, there are, of course, many far-right groups that support Putin's regime, but still, the most radical, most extremist organizations, they, they're against it. Uh, the same we have here in Ukraine, where the far-right would be against the government, against the establishment. Uh, but there are also many differences. Of course, this is uh, the Ukrainian far-right is largely anti-Russian. Uh, not necessarily a against the Russian people as an ethnic group, but against Moscow's policies, against the official Kremlin. But um, in terms of ideas, if we just take aside all the, um, all the issues about the enemies, who is the enemy for, uh, for the Ukrainian or Russian far right, there are many similar, uh, there are many uh, uh, Again, similarities between them. They are against gays, they are quite um, skeptical or even critical about the West, about the um, US in particular. So there are many similarities. And could we analyze it as a general trend for all Europe, or at least central? Europe? Yes, there are central points, and this is the reason why we refer to those groups as far right groups, because there are clear ideological similarities between them. They all belong to one far-right family, so to say. And this is true for even for the US and, and for Europe as well, of course. And is it possible to build some connection between them at an interstate level or not? Uh, there were contacts between the Ukrainian far-right and the European far-right parties, but uh, they all ended in 2013, 2014 when most of the far-right groups in the West started to support uh, Putin's Russia rather than Ukraine. And that led to alienation between uh, the Western far-right and the Ukrainian far-right. But at the same time, the, the Ukrainian far-right, they are still trying to, to cooperate. 
and they do cooperate with some groups from Poland, for example. But this is a very limited cooperation. It's interesting about Poland because actually, like a, a centrist uh, of Ukrainian far radicals, they have been quite rivals with uh, Polish. Yes, sometimes, but sometimes historical differences can be just. Uh, taken aside. And uh, for example, some Slovak groups, they support the right sector, for example. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, there are also some contexts uh, uh, context between the Russian uh, far right and the Ukrainian far right. And some, um, some members of the uh, right wing movements in Russia, they come to Ukraine and fight uh, against the Russia backed separatists. And you know about this uh, gathering of Russian nationalists in Kyiv? Uh, how do you feel about it? What do you think? Well, it's, I think it's a, even a normal situation where you have many people uh, from Russia. Uh, being loyal to the Ukrainian state who they all gather here and they decide to do something about this and they decided to build this group. And who is the social base for Ukrainian far rights at the moment? Well these are mostly young people in their teens and then 20s and 30s who feel disaffected, who feel alienated from uh, the um, from the democratic processes in Ukraine and who feel that the war is something that they waited for a very long time about fighting because the far right is uh, ideologically is already quite an aggressive movement and uh, the war is something natural for them. But uh, speaking about the war, uh, we can see a lot of connections between like a uh, war ideology now and Svoboda ideology or they used this uh, new generation of uh, veterans and warriors, do they? Yes, they're trying, obviously they're trying to influence uh, soldiers and officers who take part in the anti-terrorist operation. And uh, there are some volunteer battalions uh, that quite explicit about uh, their own ideology, or at least, as far as I understand, there are they are trying to recruit new members uh, from even uh, non-political uh, volunteer battalions and uh, especially rank and file from the Ukrainian army.